Let's talk a little bit more about rapier versus katana cutting through katanas and a response to Dave Rawlings from London Longsword Academy. Hey folks, Matt Eason here, Scholar Gladiatore. So Dave, my very good friend Dave, for anybody who doesn't know, me and Dave go way back and are uh, really good mates. And um, I don't get to see him as often uh, these days as I used to. Uh, and that's a great regret um, to me. But he posted up a really, really interesting following up, follow up to one of my videos, I've done a few recently, talking about rapier versus katana in which, uh, and I'll stick the link below to his video so you can go and watch that whole thing if you want to right now. And in it, Dave describes a tactic or technique, a set of techniques, um, strategy against the two-handed sword with a rapier. Now, I don't know Girard Thibault's um, treatise at all. I was aware that there were long swords shown in some parts of it, uh, but it is primarily a rapier, or as Dave would say, a sword uh, fencing source, but for most of the rest of us would say it's a rapier source, but uh, nevertheless, anyway, it's, um, it essentially it describes techniques for using a sword like this versus a sword like that, a two-handed sword. Now, um, Dave's techniques are really, really interesting. Um, and it's interesting that Thibaut makes this point about how to preserve your narrow blade by going against a larger, more robust two-handed uh, blade, a two-handed sword, um, by not directly blocking with the edge, but by essentially deflecting or, um, shall we say, redirecting the energy. Uh, so it sort of glissades or glides along the blade and you can control it from there rather than just doing a sort of block or parry like we might do in sabre or backsword. Um, so that's all great. Uh, and I'm really, really happy to have learned that because as I say, I know nothing about Thibaut and um, Dave teaches it on a regular basis and is very much an expert of it. Um, but uh, here's the thing. So I wanted to say, uh, for those of you who've seen that video or just even if you're just interested in a bit more on this topic, is a European two-handed sword like a katana? Well, so this is the bit where I would slightly disagree, disagree with Dave, although not. So in a sense, I don't think that the katana really equates to a two-handed European sword. So in that sense, I disagree. On the other hand, the tactics that Dave describes and that Thibaut describes would certainly be applicable against the katana. So in that sense, I can see the parallel and I can absolutely see uh, why Dave uses this as an example. Now, what we need to talk about here, however, is the differences between modern practice weapons made with modern materials. Uh, as Dave mentioned, I've done some uh, fairly tough testing of a, a longsword feather, well, in fact, not just me, my whole club, a longsword feather against a modern Hanway rapier. We tried to break it and we couldn't. Does that tell us, tell us anything about sharp originals? Well, that's why I'm holding two sharp originals. Not because I'm going to go chopping into my original um, 17th century Spanish rapier with my original uh, probably 17th century uh, Japanese katana. Um, however, we can talk a bit about the materials and the, the differences here. So first of all, it is absolutely, I think, important to mention two differences between this antique rapier and a modern one. First of all, this is not made of 21st century alloy steel. This is made of 17th or perhaps very early 18th century um, steel that will not be as reliable and will not be as homogenous and perhaps won't be as well heat treated as a modern Hema rapier. So absolutely period swords and Thibaut obviously mentions this so he says you know if you try and block the two-handed sword directly with your rapier you might end up holding a dagger as Dave says um, so so your blade will break. We know that blade breakages absolutely were a thing that happened a lot in history and they still happen in the modern day as well as Dave gives a, an anecdotal uh, example. We've all had blades break in practice and in tournaments and stuff like this. But historically, it probably happened more uh, because period steel and period heat treatment is less consistent, less reliable. So the first thing to say is, yes, absolutely, the period steel is less reliable. The next thing to say is that there is a tangible difference between a blunt blade and a sharp blade. And that's for a very, very simple reason that you have less material at the point of impact. Now, what happens with a sharp blade when it impacts another sharp blade? is that you get a notch and that notch is what we would call a stress riser and that hugely incre increases the chance of a catastrophic failure, in other words a break, a snap. 
So a sharp blade against a sharp blade is more likely to break than a blunt blade versus a blunt blade because blunt blades are less likely to create a notch, which is a stress riser. Okay, so absolutely the period rapier with a sharp edge is more likely to break than a modern practice rapier with a blunt edge. Absolutely. However, now let's talk about the katana because here's a big difference. So one thing we have to say is while this blade is more likely to break than a modern one, um, and that would be true of all 17th century rapiers, that's also true of the 17th century two-handed sword. So when Girard Thibault is writing about long swords, those long swords are made of the same steel with the same heat treatment, and the same edge hardness and the same thin sharp edge as the rapier. So the long sword against say another long sword is just as likely to break as the rapier is against another rapier. Okay, so put that aside for a second. Here's the problem. So there are some pretty big differences between a Japanese katana and a 17th century um, Flemish or French or um, Belgian Dutch longsword. Okay, so a European longsword of the 17th century is pretty damned different to a katana of the 17th century in terms of this specific question. Obviously, there's some differences. They've, the katana's much, much shorter, shorter blade, shorter hilt, shorter overall length, no cross cord, blah, blah, blah. There's obvious physical differences between the katana and the longsword. And the longsword is a bigger, longer, heavier weapon that is more likely, in my opinion, to break a rapier than a katana is, because the katana is seriously shorter than a European longsword, therefore has less inertia, and these tend to be lighter than European longswords as well. But that all aside, there's a difference in the material. So these blades in the 17th century are made of Tamahagane steel, um, so very good quality steel for the time, remarkably um, homogenous and uh, made of um, essentially iron sand. As you know, very laborious, long process, um, and also made to very high criteria for the most part, certainly a good quality katana. And they are edge quenched rather than spring through hardened and then tempered. Okay, so the edge quench on this is done with water um, as opposed to usually oil in Europe. Um, and it is therefore harder. So this has a softer back, softer than the European sword. Okay, but it has a harder edge. Let's talk about some numbers for a second. Um, so a typical European sword of this period will have an edge hardness of around 40 Rockwell. Now, modern replicas tend to have edge hardness more like 50 Rockwell, but the originals that have been tested from this period tend to be more like 40, 45 on a good day, okay? A Japanese sword, however, might have an edge hardness of 60 Rockwell. Now, on the surface of it, you'd think, oh, well, so the katana can cut through the rapier. Well, when they make contact, at that moment of contact, the katana has a harder edge and a stronger, more robust blade in most cases. So yes, indeed, it might make a notch in the rapier that might result in a break. That's true. However, there's too much focus here on what will happen to the rapier. Because I can tell you, <laughs> anyone who has worked with traditionally made Japanese swords for any amount of time, cutting different materials, bone, or indeed clashing with bits of armor, uh, kabuto helmet, um, bits of suba, other people's blades, against pole arms, stuff like this, will tell you katana blades get chipped and they get chipped pretty damned easily. They can also get bent quite easily because remember you've got a soft back and you've got a glass-like hard crystalline edge, okay? So you've got a very hard but brittle edge and a very soft back. Now it's not to say that katanas are weak, also, katanas don't break entirely, particularly easily. I actually have an antique uh, katana in stock at the moment, which has a crack in the hardened edge that stops as soon as it gets to the main body of the blade. So indeed, if a blade bends because the front is uh, crystalline and very, very hard and brittle, it can crack the edge, but not crack the rest of the blade and the rest of the blade can be straightened and you'll retain that crack just in the edge. So this can happen with Japanese swords. Very hard edge, relatively soft back. So they will bend, they can get straightened, but the edge will often crack and often chip and you'll lose bits out of it. So, <laughs> at the moment of impact, not only is this a very 
different object uh, in terms of size and weight and everything else to a European longsword. But it's also got an incredibly different structure to the rapier. The rapier is more likely to flex like a spring, as you can see this, I'll just very carefully put the katana down here. This, obviously I'm gonna be relatively careful here and I will oil this afterwards, but you can see this is a springy blade just like a modern practice rapier. And this is an original. I've got another one behind me up there. It's the same. They are springy blades like a leaf spring. So this can absorb and spring in a way that katanas, being very careful here, katanas cannot, okay? This is more likely to bend, but a very hard edge. So both of them could get damaged, both of them could get fatally damaged in some cases. You could say that the katana is more likely to snap entirely than the, uh, the rapier is more likely to snap entirely than the katana. Um, the katana is more likely to bend. That being said, this has got a springy blade, so this is more shock absorbent, and we're less likely to, to lose a chunk out of the edge, whereas this one hitting another steel object, including any part of the guard or cross guard, uh, the uh, bowl or the cross guard, incidentally, can use, lose a chip out of this quite easily. So, to conclude, I would say, first of all, no, not in any way it meant as any criticism to anything that Dave said, but really as a further talking point on the topic, because I think it's a really interesting topic actually. And it's not complete fantasy, we know that rapiers did go up against katanas in the 17th century. Um, I, I think this is a more complex point than perhaps I originally made in my first videos, and probably a more complex point than maybe Dave made in his answering video, because these are very different objects. Yes, period steel is, is more crap than modern steel, Yes, sharp edges make a difference to durability compared to blunt edges of practice weapons. But in addition to that, the katana is pretty different as a physical object at this time, even in the 17th century, to a European two-hand sword. It's a lot smaller, a lot shorter, so you've still got the massive reach disadvantage. And it has a completely different structure with a soft back that's less likely to snap, but a very hard edge that is gonna cut well, but it's more likely to fracture and crack. I hope that has been illuminating. Thanks once again to um, my mate Dave and the London Longsword Academy link below. And uh, I hope I see you soon, Dave. Uh, take care. And uh, for the rest of you out there, I have continued to be Matt Easton and I will be again next time as well. <laughs> Cheers for watching, everyone. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.